swear to their existence. It looked kind of like an ape. It was about, I'd say, a good 10 feet tall. They are echoes of the past, yet their tracks have been detected by modern science. People realize that with the amount of evidence there is, that there's a chance that this mystery may be solved in time. They are legend brought to life. They are Sasquatch. Beyond what is known lies an unexplored world of shadows and phantoms. A land that knows no limits of time or space. From the dawn of discovery to the nightfall of catastrophe. It's about to have an unpleasant encounter with the self-styled masters of the wilderness, man. sighting of a magnificent animal with a ridiculous name, Bigfoot. I think it deserves a name more in keeping with its character. Sasquatch. Since the early 1800s, the creature has been reported all across North America. But it has also been seen all across the world. Similar animals have been seen in the Himalayas, where they're called Yeti, or the Abominable Snowman. There's a theory that they came to North America by the same land bridge traversed by the Indians. This land is called the Pacific Northwest. A man or an entire town could easily be absorbed into this expansive wilderness. This single forest covers a huge area, and even today, maps are incomplete. Here, time not only stands still, it doesn't exist. And here is where Sasquatch makes its home. Well, I'd loaded two loads of logs out that morning, and uh, I looked out towards the timber, and I saw this movement. And I stood and watched, and... Uh... From around behind a big tree, there was a black deal looking at me, and it had a peaked, pointed head. As I recall, I brightened my headlights to get a better view of it, and I started slowing down. I started to hit the brakes. 
and uh, and then all of a sudden it started to move and I thought, my Lord, the tree's going to come across the road. And as this moved away, there was vine maples there that were pretty high and I could see these broad shoulders and just kind of a nub, a suggestion of a head. He was standing upright and his arms like was hanging down the side of him and he looked between a man and a beast. I swung my arm in a big arc and I said, uh, I yelled out, Hi, Sasquatch, come on down. It looked kind of like an ape. I mean, an ape in uh, sort of humanoid in structure. Um, it was about, I'd say, a good 10 feet tall. That's the reason why I thought it was a tree. Bigfoot is gigantopithecus, and it's still here. Sightings like those are almost too numerous to catalog. But they all agree on certain physical characteristics. Standing between five and eight feet tall, Sasquatch weighs between five and eight hundred pounds. Covered in brown, red or black fur, it is apparently a vegetarian, although occasionally the creature varies its diet by eating small woodland animals. By all reports, it is shy, gentle, and avoids contact with humans at all costs. And it has other unusual characteristics. Several people who have um, uh, been close to a Bigfoot have reported this uh, tremendous odor. Um, I might mention something else, and that is sounds. Um, the only sounds that we have able to be, that we've been able to um, pick up out of all these reports that um, seem to be real are very powerful whistling noises. And um, I talked with um, an anthropologist once, and it was determined that one of the most penetrating uh, sounds in dense forest is a whistle. Uh, it's a sound which will carry um, furthest. And so, um, although this is a very large cre creature, and it might seem a little ridiculous to think of it whistling, um, it could be a, a form of communication. This is the mark of Sasquatch, taken from a set of tracks that covered a five-mile stretch of dense forest. The depth of each print indicates that whatever made it weighed 800 pounds. 800 pounds. And there's other, more dramatic evidence. On a hot afternoon in October, Roger Patterson and a friend were riding through some woods in Northern California. Suddenly their horses shied. They looked ahead and saw something squatting by the creek. As the creature ambled away, Patterson took this film, film that has been analyzed, debated, and contested ever since. What did Roger Patterson see that afternoon? If this film is not a hoax, then it's a very important scientific discovery, and we need to examine it in more detail. What was it that Roger Patterson photographed that October afternoon? this Sasquatch or a cleverly executed hoax? Let us look closer. The key to this film's credibility is the way the animal walks. A man could not duplicate this peculiar gait. The human body isn't built that way. And that leaves just one explanation. This is Sasquatch. If somebody was inside of a, an ape suit trying to imitate that, the shoulders are hopelessly too wide. There's no way you can put a man inside of a monkey suit and get the Patterson film unless you broke his arms in the middle of the upper arm and put a new hinge there. Grover Kranz is a contradiction in terms. He's a man of science, yet he believes in Sasquatch, and that's not a popular viewpoint. I don't really blame the scientific community, since they have so many silly things to dispose of for uh, being dubious of the Sasquatch. I think, however, rather than denying the Sasquatch, they ought to simply say they don't know. There is obviously a scientific debate. 
and also a human dimension to this search, a personal element that has become a way of life to a man called Peter Byrne. My interest in Bigfoot grew out of um, original interest and work on the, um, the Yeti, or Abominable Snowman of the Himalaya. I think the main reason why people are interested in the Bigfoot mystery is because it's one of the last great mysteries um, of this uh, diminishing world of ours. We have the Loch Ness monsters, we have flying saucers, if you like, a few things like that, and we have Bigfoot. And um, I think also people realize that with the amount of evidence there is, that there's a chance that this mystery may be solved in time. But when you think of it, when you think of the possibility of um, a prehistoric man living in the forest of the Pacific Northwest, there's a tremendous amount of um, attraction in that. It arouses enormous curiosity in people. They want to know um, who or what the thing is. And I think that's where the, um, that's where the interest lies. Byrne has never seen Sasquatch, but he's gathered evidence, and he believes it exists. I think they do. I think um, that uh, the evidence does support uh, the existence of a few. I've had a certain advantage. I've had the time uh, to be able to do um, uh, 10 years of research, uh, which is more than a lot of people. And uh, I've seen a lot of evidence. I've seen historical evidence. I've seen footprints. And then I've been able to look uh, into the eyes of sane, uh, sensible, rational people who say they've seen one. And uh, so as far as I'm concerned, um, I think that um, a few of them uh, do exist uh, in the forests of the Pacific Northwest. So what is Sasquatch? One of the difficulties in coming to a conclusion is that there are so many similar stories of strange animals in the woods. One of the most unusual of these tales comes from New Jersey. This is the Pine Barrens, an aptly named wilderness spanning hundreds of miles across southern New Jersey in the United States. For 200 years, reports of a strange animal have been circulating and nobody has been able to identify what it could be. The Jersey Devil has been around since 1735, and it's a uh, legend which is as strong today as it ever has been. And, uh, of course, being a devil or a demon tends to take on many different sizes, shapes, and descriptions. And altogether, it's probably done more than Bigfoot, Loch Ness, uh, Monster all put together. In 1909, many eyewitnesses saw a creature that was huge, mysterious, elusive. Sasquatch. During this period in January, thousands of people saw the Jersey Devil or his footprints. Posses formed to chase him. Rewards were offered. Many people locked themselves up in fear and stayed in their home. These sightings have persisted for centuries. And though no physical evidence exists, the legend refuses to die. Uh, a lot of credible witnesses have seen it. Uh, they've seen this strange thing. Sometimes the people will even say, I, I don't know exactly what it was, but it's something that's definitely out of the ordinary. Sightings and second-hand reports of Sasquatch can only take us so far. We must look at the world through his eyes. Let your imagination roam through this wilderness. You have known the forest is your only home. Its rhythms are your rhythms, your life. You are alone, knowing few of your kind. For you are Sasquatch. You are legend. lived here forever, but there are strangers in your forest, and they bring danger. You've tried to hide, but you can only hide so long. Time is running out, the forest grows smaller every day, and you're weary. Some parts of the Pacific.
Pacific Northwest. Organized posses patrolled the backwoods looking for a Bigfoot to blast down. This vigilante mentality has led to a law on the books in Skamania County in the state of Washington. Anyone convicted of killing a Sasquatch will find $10,000 and put in jail. The only way that we can establish the existence of the Sasquatch positively is to produce a body, uh, all or a significant part of one. This isn't just my idea. I've been told this by all of the skeptics, including the top authorities at the Smithsonian. And until uh, physical evidence is produced, um, the scientists are not about to say that it's real. They're not about to accept it, try and classify it. This leaves us then with uh, the only obvious alternative is for somebody to shoot one and uh, bring in the body. I've talked to uh, people, two men, who say that um, they've seen one at, at close range and they had a rifle and they put the rifle on it and one of them did intend to shoot. When he looked uh, through the telescopic sight, he saw what he said was a human face, and it deterred him, and then the thing walked away. I don't think that, uh, that shooting one would be justified in any way. Science, at least, has a motive, but no motive can justify this. Uh, if I was able to, uh, I would shoot one, because I think it's very important to establish that these exist. If it's there, we should know what it is, but if it's there, I think we'll eventually destroy it. Oh, I think it's absolutely ridiculous because uh, they just will shoot me to prove there's a humanoid around here. Until someone literally brings one in, there, there is no absolute proof that these animals exist. Well, I certainly think that it would be worth every once in a while if it uh, could be tranquilized. I, I see no necessity in, uh, in killing it. It's natural to be afraid of things you don't know about, and the more you learn about Bigfoot, the more you realize that he's just kind of curious. He wants something to eat, of course. It's like the Titanic. They found it, and uh, some say leave it, and some say go get it. I think there ought to be some way to have a right to capture him, if you have to shoot him and cripple him or something to get him or whatever it takes to capture him because I'm, I'm positive he's out there. This tragedy has not occurred yet. Sasquatch still lives among us, but for how long? Man has a lamentable record for showing compassion for that which he fears, and he fears Sasquatch. In our records and in our research, we never saw any sign of aggression uh, of any kind, any sign of danger. And I think that um, if the number of incidents that uh, we were able to record are all true, here we had um, a large primate that was um, in the vicinity of camps that had children um, and young people. And uh, if, this thing, if these things were vicious, um, if they were antagonistic, I think by now there'd be some record. To the best of my knowledge, the uh, Sasquatch is not dangerous to humans. There have been a number of uh, accounts of them taking some threatening activity towards humans, but most of these threatening stories usually have something wrong with them in some other aspect of the story. No, if they're here, they've always been here, and they've always been here in good number. And of course, every year we hear of a certain number of people being killed by bears. We never hear of anyone being killed by Sasquatch. What will happen now? Life? or death. The choice is entirely ours, and the forest stands still, waiting in silence for our decision. There's an ability about this creature that the Indians recognized. They turned Sasquatch into legend, into a god of sorts. We too should celebrate the existence of a living wonder like Sasquatch, not drive it deeper into isolation. A living legend.
but not the only answer to this material.